Hey everybody, how are we doing? Unit 8, Section 1, we're talking about transformations and translations. We're going to bring out my friend Mario here. Some funky Mario music. Uh, we're going to look at Mario later and see how Mario relates to all this kind of stuff. We're going to first start out with uh, another one of my childhood favorites, transformations with the Transformers. Alright, so you're going to have to write this stuff down. Uh, transformation is when an image is changed in some way. It's very simple. If you change an image, then that's a transformation. Okay, the change could be, we're going to look at primarily, there's three of these things we're going to look at. There are four that you should know about, and you should have seen these in Math 8, maybe in uh, middle school sometime. Alright, so the first thing we're going to look at, uh, the first transformation is called a translation. Okay, and so just so you know how this works, we always start with an original image. And on mine, I made them black and white. That's the what we call the pre-image. It's the image before we change it. Okay, and then uh, the image after we change it is called the image. I mean, it's pretty straightforward there. A translation is when you take an image, a pre-image, and you simply slide it across the graph paper or slide it across the screen or somehow you just slide it over. We're using Optimus Prime here to show that this image was probably slid over, what, this far to the right and this far up. And together it creates what we call here kind of a vector thing where it's slid, okay? It could slide up, down, left, right, all the way around. Uh, if it slides, it's called a translation. So that's the first type of transformation. Remember, we're talking about transformations. There's four types we're going to talk about first type is translation okay the next type is called a reflection okay a reflection is when you kind of flip it over a line now notice that uh, in this type of transformation everything flips backwards okay notice that if you are what do we got here the gun is on the right hand all right well after it flips over the gun is on the left hand everything's been flipped and the way that you can think about a reflection is uh, you have the pre-image uh, pretend like it's wet ink or maybe some paint and you fold the paper on the line. And if you folded the paper on the line, this ink would go to the other side. So, I mean, some things you should know about, like the head is an equal distance to the line is that head there. But we're going to talk more about reflections later. Again, we have a pre-image, which is the image before you change it. And then after you flip it, that's going to be called the image. All right, so that's easy enough. So we have translations, slide, and we have a reflection, which is like a flip. Okay, and the next one, thank you Megatron for your help there, Sound Blaster, this is a rotation, okay, now, you always need a point to rotate, and the way I think about it is, if this were uh, a sheet of paper, and you took a nail, and you, uh, let's hammer a nail right here, or you screw a screw in, then this thing can rotate around, just like, you know, like a pinwheel or something of that nature. Uh, we have the pre-image here and the image is down here this has been rotated 90 degrees this is called a rotation awesome now the thing you should know about a rotation uh, we are most likely 99.9% .9 of the time gonna go counterclockwise we don't rotate clockwise but again that's gonna come in a different lesson but you should be aware of it this is a rotation this is the third type of transformation and the fourth type we're not gonna create a lesson about because it's not in our standards but if you take a certain uh, pre-image and you magnify it. The, the way you can do this is taking the coordinates of each point and multiplying. Uh, you can either magnify it, you can also shrink it, but if you do that, um, that is called, did I put that up there? That's called a dilation. Where's my, I don't have dilation up here. Hold on, hold on. There we go, much better, dilation. And dilation, again, is, is shrinking it or growing it. You've heard of dilating your pupils, okay? When you go to get your eyes checked, they open it up real big so they can see inside. Uh, so those are the four types of transformations we're going to look at. You have to know what an image is uh, and a pre-image. The pre-image is where you begin, and the image is after you change the shape in some way. Okay, we're going to use Mario here to help us. Uh, let's back Mario up. Here's Mario. Uh, Mario's. This is one of the favorite games of all time. If you notice right there, he came out of the gate, and we have an immediate translation. Here we go. Here he goes. He's going across the screen. So as he goes across the screen, that's he's just sliding. His image is sliding across. Okay, so that's a translation. Uh, he goes through. He does some uh, hitting here, blah, blah, blah. Okay, notice at a certain point when he gets to the middle of the screen, it's the background that starts translating. He doesn't move anymore. The background starts translating to the left. Okay, let's watch that again. 
So someone had to sit down on a computer and they had to figure all this out and they had to type in uh, different rules with translations. Look at the background moving there. All right, what do we have coming up here? Anybody know? He's going to get the mushroom. What's going to happen? Dilation. What's a dilation? When they, the pre-image, right now we got a Mario here. There's the pre-image. When he hits that mushroom, he's going to grow. Ta-da. All right, that was a dilation. Okay, so it's another geometric transformation that uh, someone has programmed into Super Mario Brothers. That's awesome. There's one more that we want to look at. Oh, right there. We just missed it. Let's see what happens. Mario comes, hits that, hits that. All right, so what happened to uh, the little mushroom here? If you've noticed before, he was right side up. All right, so they're pointed uh, up more or less, and as Mario comes and hits him, ta-da, now he's upside down. What is that? Well, that could either be a reflection, which means he was flipped down, but I think more likely it was a rotation where he was rotated around. But that is basic. Look, this is almost perfect image here. You got one on top, one on the bottom. Okay, so hopefully now you understand why we need to learn these things. Because if you, you know, we want to set you up so you can go and be one of these video game designers if you want to. Some other things we have to learn. All right, so quickly, if you notice, some of these pre-images and images are congruent to each other. So Optimus Prime here, the image is congruent to the pre-image. Uh, it was as Megatron. After you flip it, same size, same shape. They're congruent. Uh, the rotation. What is this? Sound Blaster. He is congruent. Okay, same size, same shape. He's just been turned over. Okay, the dilation, not so. Okay, so if your image is congruent to your pre-image, then we call that an isometry. All right, that's a new word for it. So an isometry is when your pre-image is congruent to your image. Easy enough. All right, so here's a formal definition for us. Translation is a transformation that maps all the points of a figure the same distance in the same direction. All right, so we're going to think of that as a slide. If you notice how we use notation here, point B goes to B prime. Point A goes to A prime. So we put that little that little mark right there, apostrophe thing. That's a prime, kind of like Optimus Prime. All right, so we're going to go through and we can look at which points, where they started, where they ended up. kind of helps us do that. Uh, what this statement here says is that the distance from A to A prime is equal to the distance from B to B prime, so on and so forth. All right, so on the right here, we have a nice little diagram where a square was uh, it, it slid four to the right and two down. So if you, you read through this, each point of the black square moves four units to the right and two units down. Using the variables, you can say that x, y, all right, so here's where it gets a little complicated. So you say the point x, y, we want to move it four to the right, all right? Don't get caught up in all this, uh, this is very complicated jargon, blah, blah. You want to move it four to the right. So in the x direction, you go four. So here's how we write our rule. You take x and you go four in the x direction. You add four to the x. All right, but then we want to go 2 in the y direction. That's 2 units down. That's the y direction. So you take the y and you subtract 2. How easy is that? That's how you write the rule for these things. Let's see if we can do it with an example here. Okay, so we read through the example, and what do we see here? The image, all right, they give us a little rule here. Can we just, I'll underline the rule. That's fun stuff. Okay, so they want us to uh, basically graph the image after we translate it. What's this say? X minus 2. So that means you have to go what? Right or left? That means left. You go left two. All right. So if you need to write that out, you can. You go left two, and then you go down five. Easy enough. So here are our points: left two, down five. So P, which is right here, this is the point two one. All right. So that's where we start. You subtract two from the the x coordinate. That'll end up at zero. You subtract five because you want to move it down five from the y coordinate which is 1 so it's 1 minus 5 which gives you negative 4 all right so i mean this might look a little more confusing than i think it actually i mean it's pretty easy stuff all you do is you take the rule and you apply that to the x coordinate and you apply this side to the y coordinate and you're all done so if i were to take my graph paper and if i were you guys it says uh, left 2 down 5 i figured out so at this point you go left 2 and you go down 5 Three, four, five. All right, so that would be right here. This would be the point P. All right, so when I'm done translating it, then it becomes P prime. How about Q? I want to go left two, down five. So I go over two, and then down one, two, three, four, five. So that's a new point. We're going to call it Q prime, because that's where Q ended up. And R, left two, down one, two, three, four, five. So here's R. So what you should end up with is a shape that is congruent. Hey, check that out. It's congruent. But I didn't label my R. Got to label all these R prime. And you're all done. Okay, that's how you write the rule. There's three ways that we can write the rules.
Okay, what I'm going to do is actually use an example first, and then we'll go back and look at the, uh, you know, the blah, blah, blah up there. So, for example, translation moves a point four to the right and three down. Okay, so we're going to go to the right, four, and we're going to go down, three. Okay, so what does that mean? In the x direction, you add four, and in the y direction, you subtract, because you're going down, three. So it becomes x plus four and y minus three. So what does this say? The point P gets mapped to P prime, okay, pre-image, image, and you take x and you do x plus four. You add four to the x, and then you subtract three from the y. That is called the algebraic rule. You are going to have to write these out, okay, and know how to do stuff like that. Easy enough. Shorthand. You can write a translation of 4, negative 3. That means you add 4 because the 4 is positive. So you add 4 to the x and you subtract 3 from the y. That's shorthand. That's the exact same thing except written uh, for the lazy people like me. There's another way to do it, a vector notation where you use these fancy little brackets and things like that. We're going to stay away from that. But you might see it. So, you know, hey, just be aware of it. All right, so back up to the generalized rules. So we have the point x, y, what happens? Well, you, if you want to move it a units, then we say you go to x plus a. But a could be negative, that's moving it left, so you'd actually end up with a minus, kind of like we did up here. If you want to move it up and down, okay, if it's plus b, you, you're going to move it b units. All right, so uh, in this case, we want to move it down 3, so it's minus 3. Don't get caught up in all this generalized stuff. As long as you can apply it here with real numbers, then you'll be okay. All right, let's move right along. By the way, should we find out why it's a good idea to uh, be good and proficient in your translations? Here, here's a reason why you should. Mayday, mayday. Hello, can you hear us? Can you hear us? Can you... Okay, over. We are sinking. We are sinking. Hello? This is the German Coast Guard. We are sinking. We're sinking. What are you thinking about? Hey, that one there was for all of our German American students out there. All right, so example two, writing the rule. This is not difficult. You first have to look at them. All right, so what's the rule? There's three ways to do it, remember. Basically two for us. We're not going to use that vector way. Um, so how would we write this rule? Let's see what happens. You start here at this point. I'm going to take point R, and I'm going to see what happens. R starts here, and it goes to R prime. You always end up at the prime. So you start with R, you go to R prime. So to do that, you have to do what? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You need to go eight in the X direction and down two. So your rule is it's eight this way and then two this way. So you take the point x, y. This is the algebraic rule again. We're going to map it onto p prime, new point, x. How do we move over? Plus eight. Or how do you do the y? Down to, hey, there you go. That is your algebraic rule for this translation. That's easy enough. Shorthand, we'd call that a translation of 8, negative 2. Hey, that was easy enough. Even Bruss could do it. Let's look at example 3. All right, so graph the image of the figure CAT using the rule one unit left. All right, let's write that. We're going to go one unit left, and we're going to go two units up, all right, just so we know what's going on. Then write the translation rule, but let's write that rule right now. Let's take a point x, y, and what are we going to do with it? We need to move it one to the left. So the new point, we're going to map it to p prime, that'll be our new point, and we're going to move it one to the left, which means you subtract one from the x. Remember, left is a negative here, so we subtract one. The y, you add two, so y plus two. Hey, that's our algebraic rule. Shorthand, we'll call it translation of negative one, Two. All right, so those both, uh, that's writing the translation rule. You will have to write it. I know for a, a fact you'll have to learn how to do it algebraic way. So don't just say, oh, I'll do the shorthand every way. you, you got to do it both. And what does our new image look like? Well, it's going one to the left. So let's do one of these. And then up two. It's a congruent shape. It's exactly the same. It's been slid up. We're almost done this little uh, smart board thing. I put my little primes. you got to mark the primes so we know which one is which. Because you can't really tell if you start it up and you slid down or you started down and you slid up. You don't really know, so you have to make sure you mark it correctly. Hey, that was example three. As I said, even Bruss could do it. So examples four and five, I mean, you don't need a graph. They're just telling you the points. So here is cold. All right, so what happens to the points? So I always like to find, like, the zeros, like zero, zero. 
then it's really easy to figure out what happened. You started at 0, and you went to negative 2. Well, that's left 2. That's minus 2. So here's our rule. All right, take the point x, y, and you map it to a new point, p prime, such that x, you got to subtract 2. Let's check it for all. Make sure it works. 2 minus 2. 0 minus 2. Negative 5 minus 2. Works for all of them. And then what do we do for the x? The x values, wait a second, they're all the same. What do I do? I'm confused now. Ta-da! You don't do anything. You can write plus 0 if you want, but that's boring. Just leave it as y. That way you don't have to do anything. Awesome! I did my, by the way, it said write an algebraic rule, so that's why I wrote it like this. I didn't write it shorthand. Five, write an algebraic rule to describe this transformation. Pause the video. You do it. Go! I was just doing this problem. You know what I figured out? This is this. 2EZ. This is too easy. Let's look at it. Take the point x, y. You add 18. Check it with, I mean, it's got to work for all. Does it work for all? Yep. You add 18 to all the x's, and you subtract 14 from all the y's. Hey, guys, that's it. How easy is this? Seriously, this is easy. Go ahead and take the mastery check. Uh, you know, do all the homework. Make sure you check your answers. All right, you got to graph some. You got to write some rules, but check your answers. And uh, we'll see you on the mastery check. Remember, it's nice to be important. It's more important to be nice. Zoom!